Hey, it's Elden Ring. Welcome. This is the beginning of our playthrough. Uh, I have played every Souls game in the past, every Soulsborne game except for Demon Souls due to uh, availability issues, <laughs> for, to say the least. But hey, Elden Ring is finally here, and I've been looking forward to this one, right? Who hasn't? Goodness gracious. It's pretty wild how these have grown in popularity, these games. I, I didn't get on to this shit early, to this train, the like Soulsborne train super early. I didn't get on for Demon Souls. I didn't play for Dark Souls 1, but I was around at launch for Dark Souls 2, and I played that, and that was quite fun. Despite, despite uh, a lot of people ranking Dark Souls 2 as their least favorite. I don't know. I don't... Um, although I've played them all, I'd say I'm probably, I don't know, average at them. I'm not, like, super good. I'm not super terrible. I'm probably average. I'm not... <laughs> I'm not super duper amazing or super duper bad. Somewhere in the middle. Somewhere in the middle. If anything, maybe leaning more toward being garbage. <laughs> but... Um, yeah, so I don't I don't really have too many wild ass takes about them, right? But I like them all. I like them all thoroughly. Uh, I will say I haven't played any of the DLC for Dark Souls two or three. So hey, maybe that's on our long to do list. In fact, it definitely is. But nonetheless, let's get in here as the title music begins to loop. Of course, important to remember that uh, you know this game is coming out on the back of uh, some pretty fucking bad real world events so as we take a break from reality so to speak and sort of you know enjoy ourselves in escapism and whatnot i i, I feel like it's always a little important as these humanitarian crises come and go to kind of acknowledge the fortune and privilege of being able to do exactly that to be able to take a break from it right uh, speaking of course in reference to the uh, invasion in ukraine that uh happened yesterday night yesterday sometime yesterday anyway here inside the game i went and started a character i made a character you can actually save a preset for a character that you like and whatnot so i've done that and i also like moved around in the starting area so i do i have seen a little bit of it but i moved around the starting area while recording to make sure it's mostly good for recording and whatnot no major hiccups or issues seems all right Seems good. I have heard that there's some performance issues on PC, but that's not until the latter half of the game. So hopefully, fingers crossed, by the time we reach that uh, part of the game, because apparently this is like significantly big, uh, bigger than any of the past ones, certainly. But hopefully by the time we reach that area in our playthrough, we will have um, no issues with performance. It'll be patched or whatever, right? Let's take a look at the system stuff. I've got almost everything set to default. As you can see here. Actually, I think I want to have the HUD to always on because I'm just accustomed to that. Uh, let's see. We've got it set to playing offline because I think that will work better for the playthrough. Um, normally in these games also, I'll say that um, I've worked myself into a habit for my first playthrough, I almost always do it exclusively offline. I don't do any co-op. I try to avoid uh, PvP. I don't usually get into PvP. If I do, uh, it's in, like, a New Game Plus or whatever, right? And I'm not sure if we'll do a New Game Plus for this playthrough on the channel. I don't know. We'll see. Tentatively, <laughs> right? Because the, the catch with this game is that it is significantly big. With Sekiro, uh, which we do have a playthrough of Sekiro on the channel... I will say, it's, it's a little bit older now, on a different mic and everything, different setup. But, I got so engrossed in it, and it was short enough to where I just straight up did a second playthrough of that freaking thing. <laughs> Alright, let's see here. So, I did change around the button settings. I always do this, I'm always grateful that they do it. Of course, I'm playing with a controller, uh, Soulsborne and stuff, although I'm uh, keyboard and mouse, I'm playing on PC. I do, I do prefer a uh, controller for these games, but... I always swap the bumper and triggers, so that may, that way my light attack is on the trigger and my guard is on the trigger as well, 
whereas my skill and strong attack are on their respective bumpers. It's about the only thing I ever do. One of the new things um, is that there is jumping in this one, but we're kind of already used to that because we played through uh, all of Sekiro. Let's see here. But yeah, as far as our playthrough is concerned, we'll try to do as many bosses and as much stuff as possible. I don't plan on just mainlining the main uh, core progression path. I, I want to hopefully get as much stuff as I can without looking up anything or too much, right? You know, a first first playthrough stuff. I, I prefer to not know too much, but if I have to look something up, I'm not too heartbroken about it because that was sort of how I got into these games to begin with. Uh, with Dark Souls 1, after it had already come out, I was like, um, I was like, oh, I've heard this game is really difficult and stuff. I'll, I'll look ahead and see, like, try and understand some of the systems, some of the bosses, some of the weapons I should be going for and whatnot, right? And now with a little bit of, like, being a little seasoned, I feel like I'm, I'm good to, to, like, approach it on my own terms, right? We'll make mistakes, we'll screw stuff up here and there, maybe we'll get locked out of a boss by, like, picking the wrong thing or accidentally like not killing an NPC or something, right? But we should be A-OK -okay for the for the most part. Maybe toward the end of the playthrough I'll look up like optional bosses that we may have missed, because usually I can't remember. I think there's usually usually telegraphs the point of no return quite well. Right? But yeah, we're playing offline. Um also, secret benefit is a couple months ago with Dark Souls 3, I think it was. There was some, like, weird online stuff going on where people were getting hacked and whatnot and losing progress or items or whatever in multiplayer. So I feel like that's also an added layer of protection here for us, right? Which I think you might be able to get around that by, like, backing up saves and whatnot. But also, I don't know, To the the idea of having the playthrough messed up as as we're doing it for the channel... Like, if I were doing it myself, it wouldn't be as big of a deal, because you could obviously just um, restart as painstaking as that would be. It's even more painstaking to, like, be on a schedule of videos, right? And then have to restart. Hopefully all that makes sense. Anyway, let's new game it. There we go. Good stuff. And ahead of time... Uh, when they were coming out with, like, the little character art and stuff for all their different... Uh, classes and whatnot I was quite keen on the Vagabond now we'll try to talk about this game in ref uh, as if you haven't played one of these games ever before because Elden Ring certainly seems like it's hitting off in a major way relative to any of the past games right it seems like it is it is a lot of people are going to try this out for the first time and have it be their first like from soft game I will say actually I, I played I don't remember which one but some of Kingsfield way back in the day I don't remember I was way too young at the time but yeah here's all of our classes we can show their stats and whatnot and all of the like items and stuff that they get at the beginning I do like the I intend on going melee and I do like the stat layout or strength melee, I should specify. I do like the stats, um, the stat spread on the, yeah, the hero. I think it's pretty good for what I would want to do. But also I like the armor and aesthetic of the Vagabond, right? You will notice that if you paid close attention to the, like, um, network tests, I think that they did a couple months ago. Not all of the classes are here that were in the network test. I remember hearing people talking on podcasts, and I think I saw some clips of, like, um, what was it? The Bloody Wolf? There was, like, a Enchanted Knight or Arcane Knight or something like that. And there was something else. I don't remember what the other one was. But there's classes that were available in that test that are not available here. I'm assuming it's because the, the test got you started in, like, a different place than here. I have no idea. But nonetheless, I'm kind of set on Vagabond because I just love the aesthetic so much. But they all look super cool this time around. Right? A lot of them playing uh, to their own, like, aesthetic and whatnot. I think it's super neat. I, I believe Vagabond is also... I've heard that it's also an ideal class for a starter. Like, if you're just getting started out with the game. I think Samurai is too, from what I've heard. 
I think. Don't quote me on that. <laughs> Don't quote me on that. All right. Let's go that. Type A, and then let me. Let's see here. Detailed appearance. I should have a favorite over here. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, there's my dude that I customized and saved. There we are. I tried to make him look super fucking, like, sad and miserable. The sort of character that I like to play in... <laughs> in not, I guess not just these games, but in quite a few, <laughs> frankly. <laughs> I don't know, just something about playing as, like, a miserable looking old dude. I can't, I don't know. It does it for me. Let's see. I had my, my voice set differently, though. I think you can preview, right? Yeah, sample. <laughs> Good stuff. All right. Let's back on out of there. Good. We'll zoom out a bit. And of course, I don't know. Like, like I said, with the aesthetic and all that, like we won't be using this starter set terribly long, right? So I don't know, part of me was tempted to go warrior because your starter stats will stay with you forever. But even those you'll eventually like grow out of them and whatnot, right? Especially if you end up doing like new game plus. I'm assuming this game also has new game plus, like all their past games had new game plus. Anyway, let's enter our name here. Need to get to my keyboard. Can I do spaces? I can. Cool. Yeah, for the, um, for my first test run, I just, like, skipped through fucking everything. I just, like, my name was Test. Skipped through all the cinematics that popped up and whatnot. All right. Looks good. Great. And, you know, as well, I have no idea if, this, if it's the case in this game. But in the past, in all of these games, or, well, not all of them. I don't think it happened in Bloodborne. But certainly in Dark Souls and Demon Souls. Whenever you would die your character would just look fucked up, like, even more than usual. You would, It would just be like, bam, you died? Now you have to look like a fucking, like, sick freak, right? You look like you... You look like you died. <laughs> you died? Now you gotta look like you fucking died, for real. All right. <laughs> Let's get in here. Starting game with this character. Is that okay? And like I said, the last time I played one of these, I think, was Sekiro, so... We're going to have to brush off the rust, so to speak. And even under that nice thick layer of rust, rust, whatever's there, it ain't that great anyway. <laughs> there we are. I do have subtitles turned on and all of that as well for those who would like it. At least I'm pretty sure I do. The fallen leaves tell a story. Weird, I think there was a cinematic trailer of this. Wasn't there like a preview Great that had Elden Ring was shattered? That had this voiceover? In our home, across the fall. The lands between. I never know what the fuck is going on in these games. We'll make an effort. Oh shit. Now, Queen Marika the Eternal is nowhere to be found. She flew away. Look at her. She's turning into a bird. <laughs> and in the night of the Black Knights. Oh god. Godwin the Golden. Win, God win. To perish. Man, they ripped his back right off, huh? Soon, Marika's offspring, demigods all, claimed the shards of the Elden Ring. The mad taint of their <laughs> new found <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, his delivery on it was Triggered impeccable. The shattering. Ugh. Look at that fucking, like, Symphony of the Night looking art. A war from which no lord arose. 
A war leading to abandonment by the greater will. Oh, rise now, <laughs> ye tarnished. <laughs> awesome. Ye dead, who yet live. Oh God! All of long lost grace speaks to us all. Or alone, Me. chieftain of the Badlands, the ever brilliant Gold Mask. Fear the deathbed companion. The loathsome Dung Eater. <laughs> His name is Dung Eater. <laughs> Come on. And Sir Gideon Ophnir. They all know him. Look at that little guy in the top right. Look at that dude. What's he doing up there? He's the boss. It's a fake out. Oh. Now we got some engine rendered stuff, I think. This and might be. One other. Whom grace would again bless. Oh my god, it's me. He's talking about me. A tarnished of no renown. Yeah. Cross the fog to the lands between. To stand before the Elden Ring. And become the Elden Lord. <laughs> okay. <laughs> these like they all these game oh all these games have like a really weird ass opening cutscene or whatever that just like gives you a really weird exposition dump. And I never know what the fuck they're talking about. <laughs> like, I think maybe the most convoluted of them is the um, is the opening for Dark Souls One, or maybe maybe it's maybe I just have that connection because you know it's like for nostalgia's sake I have that connection with Dark Souls One. I'm not sure, but you know, hey, shoutouts to the the furtive pygmy and whatnot. But yeah, here we go. Ooh, we're doing a heavy roll. Okay, we're going significantly slow. Should I remove my hat? Ooh, equipment menu. With the equipment menu, you can change armaments, arrows, bolts, armor, talismans, and items. You can equip up to three armaments, each to your left and right hands. The actions each armament performs will vary based on which hand is wielding it. Cool. Okay. And we have, we start with a long sword, straight sword, standard pierce. Okay. I have always kind of enjoyed their numbers heavy UI for like their stats menus. It's a nightmare if you're a new player. But once you get an understanding of it, you come, I, or at least I have always come to appreciate just how much information they just have at you. Right. Like, most of this, if you're a new player, you can mostly ignore all of this, right? Just, like, pay attention to the attack power of your weapon, and then eventually the attribute scaling there in the bottom left. Because if you, if you when you pick a weapon that you want to start building up, and, like, assuming this game lets you build up weapons, I think, I don't know. Um, as you build up equipment, pick, be mindful of, like, what your weapons, for example, scale up best with. So, like... For example, here, there's only D scaling for strength and dex. One of the issues, though, that I dislike about these games is that it... If you're not playing with, like, a wiki, or, like, the Fextra Life wiki, you know? Every, <laughs> who hasn't gone to the Fextra Life wiki for these fucking games? But, if you're not playing with that, some you just don't know, like, how some of these weapons are going to scale. You can kind of get, like, a rough idea 
of like, okay, eventually if I keep upgrading this with resources and stuff, it'll have a rank strength scaling, right? But you don't always know. You just don't always know. It's so much safer to just check a wiki, right? It's one of the things that I, I never, I don't know. As much as I appreciate all the numbers and shit here. Let's see. They do have this nice explanation shit. Right, it shows everything here. Do they actually have it to where they show... Yeah, so, so like, you could go into help and then get explanations on fucking everything. Which is useful, right? But you have to know to ask for help, I guess. But yeah, and then for shields... Oh, look, yeah, we start with a 100 uh, damage negation physical shield. Pretty good. Though, admittedly... I haven't really been a shield build since Dark Souls 1. I think shield build is like a good first timer thing because it's low risk. But as you get accustomed to them, to these games, you start to rely more on just like your iframes, your invincibility frames whenever you're dodge rolling. Right? Like so. Which is why we need to get faster rolls. Oh, map menu. With the map menu, you can check your current position and terrain and buildings in the surrounding area. You can also freely place beacons of light to serve as landmarks as you explore. Lastly, through your map, you can select any site of grace that you've discovered and travel there instantaneously. However, there are some dungeons and other areas where this cannot be done. Okay. Notice as well, it says night there in the bottom right corner. Past games did not have, like, a proper day-night cycle. Okay. Sure. Let's bring up our pause menu. You'll notice as well we can move while the game is paused. So you don't want to, like, fiddle around your menus in a dangerous area unless you absolutely have to. Okay. Will it show me, like, my... Oh, yeah, look. See there on the right? At the bottom right where it says equip load. You can see that we are currently in heavy load. <laughs> yeah, we got a heavy load going on. But if we unequip some of this shit, I don't think, um... I can't remember. Do weapons actually make a difference here? Like, if I remove... Oh, yeah, went down to medium load. Okay, that's good. So let's see, is our... Yeah, our roll is significantly faster. And in real life, my controller does not vibrate. There we go. Now, I have heard that in this game... I've seen a few, like, um early reviews or whatever and whatnot and people talking about the game I've overheard like in podcasts and whatnot. So I know a few things of what to expect. Like for example, I know in this game, sort of similar to Sekiro, which I kind of want to build toward, um, you can, you can like, what, what's it called? There's like stance or posture. No, I think posture is, um, I forget what it is, but like if you block, you block a, an attack and your timing is good. You can follow it up with a heavy attack and you'll inflict, like, stance damage to enemies that will open them up. And it's super, it's like a super useful new uh, sort of way that it's pulled off in this game. But I think, like, if new players come to grips or, like, come to understand that, I feel like that could help them out. Okay, let's read this message. Though the path be broken and uncertain, claim your place as Elden Lord. Oh, I thought I would become the ring. All right. Pillage remains. I got a finger. <laughs> Tarnished, wizened finger. So wise. Okay. Whoops. All right. Oh, whoops. Oh, whoops, whoops, whoops. Okay. Let's see here. Oh, let's go over to inventory. Inventory menu. With the inventory menu, you can browse the items you're carrying, drop them on the ground, or throw them away. You can also use tools from the inventory menu. Okay. Sure. Should we try and read about these items and, like, their lore and shit? Because that's always the thing. All these items in these games have lore that kind of help to tell the story. That was especially true in, like, the early Dark Souls games. And, like, you wouldn't... you would, Even by playing the games, you wouldn't have a fucking clue of what's going on, really. Right? Like, you would have a rough idea, like, Oh, I should probably kill this thing. <laughs> right? <laughs> but, uh... It, without reading the lore on these actual items, like, who the fuck knows what's even going on? 
Let's see. Oh yeah, see? Look. Oh, okay, I see what these do. So, Memory of Grace, we've already got this. The Memory of First Grace, which once guided bygone tarnish to the lands between. Should we try and read all these? I feel like maybe I want to. Maybe I want to try and make an attempt to get into the story of them. Right? Maybe we'll try that. We'll try and read all the shit of stuff that we get as we're going along. Uh, lose all runes and return to the last site of grace visited. Oh, right. Okay. Runes are like our souls in this, which I'll probably end up just calling souls. Or maybe, <laughs> or maybe we, we, uh, we try and call them rings. <laughs> it is merely a cycle. Stand before the Elden Ring. Become the Elden Lord. Okay, how about this nasty finger? Item for online play. Can also be used from the messages menu. Used to write messages. Ah, your messages will be conveyed to other worlds, allowing other players to read them. A finger of corpse wax. So emaciated the bone is visible. It is a relic from those who came before, left to help those who would come after. Right. So, like, this message... In these games, you can leave these mess messages here on the ground, and you'll be able to read them and see them from other players, right? It sort of has a weird way of interlinking between other players and stuff. I think it's like region locked. I have no idea how it works behind the scenes. It it just works in some weird way. <laughs> I don't know how, but it, it does it. And sometimes you'll see phantoms of other players as they're progressing, or you'll see like blood stains on the ground from other players. You can interact with them, and you'll see like how someone died in an area, and sometimes that can help you out. Let's see. Do you think we should... Oh, look. Does jumping... Yeah, jumping actually does break shit. Oh, but if you jump directly on something, it doesn't. Well, if you jump into it... Huh. Oh, that seems wild. Okay. I could see them making some, like, nightmarish puzzle where you have to jump very carefully. Can I jump and then move midair? Yes, you can. Okay. Good to know. Anything else around here? Now we're good. Alright, let's pop the door. I'm very curious, if you're watching this, and you've never played one of these games before, uh, feel free to let me know, I'm super curious about that stuff. Because like I said, it sounds like there's going to be a lot of- oh hey. The door is blocked shut. It sounds like there's going to be a lot of new people trying out these games for the first time with Elden Ring. Alright, anything over here? Good. One of the new things in this game is that you can just freely jump. In the past, um, I don't think it was until Sekiro that you could just jump. You always had to, like, put in specific commands to do a jump. You couldn't just freely jump however and whenever you wanted. I'm pretty sure there's, yeah, special jump moves. Yeah, notice we do like a completely different move in midair. Let's try heavy. There we go. Ooh, that's effective. It's really quick. Okay. Wow, does it not actually consume our stamina when we... Yeah, look at that. Maybe it only goes down whenever we land hits? Huh. Weird. How about if I... Use that. No, yeah, my stamina isn't going down. How odd. Okay. Well, nothing here. Alright. I, I do wonder, should we sign in? Maybe we need to sign into the services to see other people's messages and shit. Because I'm not sure how it works. Like, I think you... The only way you get invaded in this game, I think I remember. The only way you get invaded by enemy players... Um, is if you willingly open yourself up to it. So we don't need to worry about, I think, having someone, like, come in and ruin our day. Not just within the confines of the game, but also, like, fuck up our save file. <laughs> we don't have to worry about all that. Let's see. Uh, block your summon sign in worlds with adversaries present. Launch setting. Play offline. Let's go... Perform matchmaking. Play online. Okay. Cool. So are we going to connect here? Is a whole bunch of shit going to appear? Because we just got our... Like, our soap Or our finger that lets us write to other people. Now, maybe we have to restart the game. We'll do that for the next one. 
Okay. Let's see. Let's roll through all this. But yeah, if, if you're familiar with this stuff, let me know if, if it's actually opt-in or not for the PvP, because I am I do have some concern about that, and preference as well. Right. It's it's not purely just like concern out of the the sanctity of the playthrough not getting like obliterated by some kind of rando hacker. But also I just don't want to do PvP until uh, like New Game Plus or something. Oh, look at this. It does look very nice. I turned off the... Um, here, should I run through the graphics options I've got going real quick? Let's see this. I don't have it set to all the way maximum. That way we get... Um, we don't hit by, uh, get hit by like really bad performance shit. Especially as shit like really picks up. Okay. Let's see, so, advanced settings. Good, so I've got texture quality at maximum, and I've got motion blur off. I'm tempted to turn depth of field off, but we'll see how it goes. Some of these are like capped at high, like you can see here, but some of them you can send all the way up to uh, maximum and whatnot. Like I'm tempted by that, but I don't, I don't know if I want to. Like I'm not sure if we'll see performance issues or not. Like I said, I have heard that like, Parts of this game are unoptimized, but most of that, it sounds like, is contained to mid-game. Is that the wind howling? Hey, do you think we can cut this shit? <laughs> no. <laughs> that's not normally the kind of game that this is, but, uh... Well, that said, there are actually quite a few places in, uh... In the old uh, Dark Souls, where you could, there were exactly where this this exact shit could happen, there were bridges that got cut up and shit, and people fucking died. <laughs> okay, sure. Oh, speaking of which, I remember doing that, doing exactly that on like a uh, journey to pick up a luck scaling weapon. Is there luck in this game? Status. With the status menu, you can check your level attributes, base stats, and more. The information shown here also reflects changes to your attack, defense, and resistances bestowed by armaments and armor that you have equipped. Okay. No, there is no luck stat. Okay. So we've got vigor, mind, endurance, strength, dex, int, faith, and arcane. Right. I believe vigor and mind and endurance are our three... Let's see. Help... Explanation. There are three ma- yeah, okay. HP, FP, which is like magic, and then stamina. Okay. Endurance also affects your equip load. Good to know. Okay, cool. There's always a bunch of fun secrets hidden in these games, which is part of the fun, I think, of playing them, is just like running into these secrets yourself. Or even if you want, there's still joy. Like I said, for Dark Souls 1, I've totally played it that way. Um, I looked up almost every secret or had it revealed to me by way of there being, like, uh, messages on the ground. Like, we'll see in the future, I'm sure. But um, even, even if it's revealed to you by way of doing that or uh, looking it up, it's still fun to, to go into the secret shit and find it. Because, like I said, it's chock full of stuff like that. Usually. <laughs> and from the sounds of it, so so too is this game, right? All right. Oh, jeez. Okay, this looks foreboding. Was this thing gonna come to life? Oh, hey, that's you from the beginning. Oh, okay. All right. Oh, okay. Well, this thing is probably going to kill me. <laughs> this is a uh, okay. Okay. Oh, fuck. Oh, shit! It's got a supersonic yell! Oh my god! <laughs> so this is a common trope in their games. They throw, like, a, a wild-ass enemy that, like, uh, at the beginning, that you could kill, but it's really hard to do that. Good God. Oh, you know what? I realized something. Oh. Fortunately, I just realized it 
just now? I don't think I picked a keepsake at the at character creation. I just remembered that my first time creating a character and testing it, you get to pick a keepsake. Ooh. Oh, this is our horse, I think. It's Prior Mabel. <laughs> Don't worry, Torrent. Oh. Fortune is on his side. We found him here, after all. Oh, it's you. I've One seen you in. One of his kind is sure to seek the Elden Ring. Even if it does violate the Golden Order. <gasps> oh no, you don't want to do that. <laughs> See, this is what I mean. Like, there's so much weird ass shit going on all the time. I, I have such a difficult time understanding what the fuck is going on, and like, it's intentionally m meant to be presented in such a way, right? Like, that's that's part of the joy is is discovering the story in a weird way. Oh fuck. Okay, flask of crimson crimson tears. Oh, and cerulean tears. Good. So this is probably our potions for health and magic, or er, health and FP. <laughs> okay. Now look at that. A little something back there. HUD display, but we have HUD always on. She should start back here. Okay. Jeez, I may want to turn up brightness for recording and all that. We'll see. Because I don't know, like, how that's going to come out on, on YouTube's end. Let's see. Message. The cave of knowledge lies below. Who are you? Oh, brave tarnish, take the plunge of learning and remembrance. Recall the arts of war and your warrior's blood. Okay. Sure. Huh. What's this say? The cave of knowledge lies below. All right. Is that like a tutorialization down there? That's what it reads like. Can I talk to you again? Always worth talking to people multiple times in these games because they'll just say different shit sometimes. And sometimes they'll even give you stuff. I think it's the same here, though. No, slightly different, slightly lessened. Here, let's check our inventory. What did I pick for my... See, that's what I'm saying. I don't think I actually picked a fucking keepsake because I got so excited to start a new character. I forgot it was even... <laughs> I got so excited to play the game. forgot that I even had to uh, fucking do that. Yeah, we do not have a keepsake, and I would like one. Alright. Well, you know what? This seems like a good-ass time to end the video, right? Right here. We're not even at, like, a decent, uh, quote-unquote, save point, um, so to speak. But I'll just get to this point in a future playthrough. I'll actually just start a new game, and I'll be here with a keepsake or so. I, I saw... If you, if you know what these are about, you can pick, like, multiple different little items that, to help you out throughout the game. They're pretty inconsequential. They're like, um, I don't know, <laughs> they almost seem like a pre-order bonus, <laughs> but they're not, they're not. But um, we can get a, get our hands on that. I, I'd already even wrote down on my notebook which one I had wanted. Just like I said, got too excited, forgot to even pick it. All right, so, hey, as always with these playthroughs, um, with all my playthroughs, first few videos will be a little bit on the shorter side, right? And then we'll pick up steam and probably go to, like, um, our usual, like, 
uh, closer to around an hour, an hour plus per video and whatnot. All right. Hey, Elden Ring, it's here. I'm going to have to restart. <laughs> Until next time, please take care of each other. <laughs>